Johnson. All right, what's going on everybody? Super, 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 super stoked to have the camera back on recording videos to get y'all this video. I've been literally, work, literally working on this thing ever since I posted the last video. Insane, insane amounts of uh, research. I posted basically all the uh, research notes and all I took on my, like my Facebook, Instagram stories and stuff like that. Y'all keep up with that. Links are in the description at the very bottom of the description box. But it's gonna be super, super helpful. So I know all the time it took, like literally took me so much time. I know this is gonna be very helpful. Now I'm gonna start, this is gonna be, this is basically kind of my second one that's gonna be in like a basically a product review, product breakdown. Uh, first one's here of Ezekiel Bread. This is gonna be like a new kind of series type thing I'm doing where I'm taking brands and I'm basically dissecting or products dissecting every ingredient in that product and letting y'all know what's the benefits what's the risk of them and then overall are they healthy for you or not should you avoid them or are you okay to be eating them so today I'm going through Sobe life water and when I look this up there were eight ingredients so I'm doing the yum berry pomegranate the acai raspberry the Fuji apple pear the pomegranate cherry black and blueberry that's one flavor uh, blood orange mango and strawberry dragon fruit okay and the strawberry kiwi as well so eight flavors uh, a lot of them have repeat flavors so y'all see how I get into it when I get into it the second one already has you know that same flavor or that same ingredient if it's already a no or yes I'll just say no yes and then I'll get into the in-depth of the ones that's not in the prior ones. So I don't know how long this video is going to be. I don't know what I'm going to pop up on top yet. Uh, I will be popping up the you know the, the flavor shot of the drink and the ingredient label. Some of them I couldn't actually get the pictures of the labels, but uh, I pulled up an ingredient list label off of like what was off the product. It is just not like a picture, but some of the, most of them are actual pictures of the actual label. So here we go, young berry pomegranate so let's get the ingredients here the first one's filtered water obviously that's fine the next one is erythritol somebody was calling me but that ain't happening because i'm filming this youtube video all right so the first one is erythritol and that is a sugar alcohol now first off why i'm doing these videos is so crucial Healthy eating is so crucial for just longevity and just overall well-being and how much, how much energy you feel and everything. And it's going to help you so much with your fitness journey as well, building muscle, losing fat. I'm trying to bring the truth of what basically what you eat is not the package. It's not what it says on the front of the package. What you're eating is actually the ingredient list. That's what you're actually eating. So you could say all natural this or blah 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 this but if you look in the uh ingredients and it's got processed stuff that's not all natural you know what i'm saying companies can put there's like little loopholes companies and brands can go through to put all natural or blah 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 on the front and then not be so true in the actual ingredient list well that's what it comes down to so i'm excited because i believe this is going to help a ton of people and that's what it's all about here so let's get into it please like comment share subscribe like i said I, i've got so much time in this video it's crazy, but all for a good cause is definitely worth it. So let's get into it. First ingredient is the filter water. Obviously, that's fine. Second one, erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. Erythritol is 60 to 70 percent of sweet of sucrose, table, which is table sugar. Yet it almost it is almost non-caloric and does not affect blood sugar. The known side effects for regular use of erythritol are stomach rumbling, nausea, and diarrhea in higher doses, which are over 50 grams. Rarely, erythritol can cause allergic hives. Other methods such as electrochemical synthesis are in development. A genetically engineered mutant form of Yarrowia lipolytica, a yeast, has been optimized for erythritol production by fermentation using glycerol as, carbon source, as a carbon source and high osmotic pressure to increase yields. Now, I will say at the beginning here, if I'm not going to list all this site, all these uh, sources in the description box, 
If you do want me to send you the notes I've taken, I think it's 42 pages, I will email you the notes I've taken and you know, you can just Google these words things yourself and look yourself because I deleted some things to make it a little bit shorter. Um, but if you want the notes, just email me or message me down below. Yeah, just comment on the video your email and let me know that you want me to email you. Send me your email, I'll email it to you that way. All right. The reason why it doesn't provide calories or sugar to its consumers is because the body can't actually break it down. As we've seen before, just because a sweetener doesn't have calories and doesn't appear to affect blood sugar does not mean that it's good for your health. It naturally occurs in some fruits and fermented foods, but the variety being added to food and beverages today is typically man-made from GMO cornstarch, resulting in an ultra-processed food very far from the natural sweetening agent, it is one of those invisible GMO ingredients. Meanwhile, some scientists claim that it might even provide antioxidants to whoever ingests it, and a diabetic rat erythritol seems to act as an antioxidant to fight free radicals, and potentially offer protective protection against hyperglycemia-induced vascular damage. Four reasons to not to consume GMO erythritol. Number one, obviously it's GMO. Number two, commonly combined with artificial sweeteners, which actually makes it worse. Uh, gastrointestinal pro problems, allergic reactions. Now the, pot of, the positive side of erythritol, the, prod the product needs to have a USDA organic or a non-GMO project certified insignia on the package under these guidelines. It cannot be made from GMO, a GMO, GMO source. If you choose a non-GMO erythritol, can it be beneficial? I would say the answer depends on your specific health goals. Fans of this common sweetener mainly love it because of its lack of calories, which can be helpful to weight management. In fact, studies show that erythritol could influence the release of a certain hormone in the gut and even slow the ending of the stomach. Many people also choose it as their sweetener of choice because it won't cause a blood sugar spike, which can especially be helpful for diabetics. Studies have been mixed, but some say that erythritol can decrease plaque or even help prevent tooth decay. One double blind ram randomized trial study looked at the effects of erythritol on 485 primary school children. Each child consumed four erythritol, xylitol, or sorbitol candies three times per school day. In the follow-up examinations, researchers observed a lower number of cavities in the erythritol group than the xylitol or sorbitol groups. The time until the development of cavities was also longest in the erythritol group. Better sweetener alternatives. Erythritol may have some positive has some positives, but I'm not convinced that these positives outweigh the negatives, especially for the GMO erythritol. I personally would rather use stevia leaf extract because it is also it also doesn't spike blood sugar and it has more proven health benefits including improvement in cholesterol, blood pressure, and even some types of cancers. Raw honey is another favorite of mine that's truly a superfood. I also recommend monk fruit which is a fruit derived sweetener that has been used for hundreds of years. Final thoughts on erythritol. Once erythritol enters your body it rapidly absorbs into the small intestine only about 10% enters the colon while the other 90% is excreted in the urine. It essentially goes through your stomach untouched with zero metabolization. Many manufacturers and consumers think this is great because that means no added calories or sugar to your diet, but what about it is really healthy or natural? Certainly nothing if it's man-made from genetically modified corn products. Even if it's not GMO, it may also cause possible gastrointestinal distress and allergic reactions in certain individuals who may be sensitive to its effects. When we eat or drink anything, we ideally want it to go to work for us and encourage our overall health and well-being. Erythritol might have some benefits and non-GMO varieties may be fine in moderation, but there are plenty of other natural health promoting sweeteners available that can be used in moderation instead. In addition to the reported side effects of our erythritol, products that contain the sweetener often combined with other artificial sweeteners. Consuming these foods can be detrimental to your health in the long run. So. Now, that was all some of the studies I found there, just to give y'all a background on what it is. Now, all of them aren't that long. Erythritol is probably the, one of the longest ones I took notes on, I believe. Um, so, me, personally, do I recommend it? No. Because it's not natural, basically. And 
uh, Sobe Life Water does not have a USD organic stamp of approval on it, so it's made from GMO uh, corn starch, corn, so it is actual, it is a GMO erythritol, which is really bad for your health. So personally, I say avoid it. Bam, new clothes. All right, everybody, different day here. I thought I had the data, the research, whatever, for citric acid and ascorbic acid I was gonna use from a previous, previous video I did, but I don't. So on to the third ingredient here, which is citric acid. Uh, citric acid is one of the most common food additives in use today. You may think it is harmless, derivative of lemons and that used to be the story today's citric acid is a whole different story citric acid is an organic acid that is a component of all aerobic living organisms most abundantly and not surprisingly in citrus fruits this weak acid has been used as an additive in processed foods for more than 100 years as a preservative a sour flavor flavoring or an emulsifying agent because of its effective preservative properties Citric acid can be found in most canned and jarred foods to prevent botulism. Uh, known from the 8th century, but first isolated in 1784 by Carl Wilhelm Scheele from lemon juice, industrial scale citric acid production began in the late 19th century. Made from Italian lemons, World War I interrupted this cycle, and an American food chemist, James Curie, discovered a process for making citric acid from mold in 1917. Spitzer started to produce citric acid from molds in 1919 from molds, people. Industrial food ingenuity has made it so that citric acid can be created from Aspergillus niger, a common black mold. You've likely heard of how dangerous black mold is. There are several strains of Asper Aspergillus that, if inhaled, can cause severe sickness or death. This particular strain of Aspergillus niger is not as lethal as others, however, in people who are weak or have impaired immune function. Aspergillus niger has been found to pose serious health risks from spore inhalation. Although citric acid can be obtained from lemon or pineapple juice, producing citric acid from Aspergillus niger is a far less expensive process. So it all comes back down to the money for the big companies. Black mold is able to efficiently and cheaply convert sugars into citric acid by feeding sucrose or glucose, often derived from cornstarch to be to the black mold. A citric acid solution is created. Corn is highly likely to be genetically modified, GMO. Uh, the resulting solution is filtered out from the mold and the citric acid is pre precipitated from the solution and processed into the final usable form using lime and sulfuric acid link for that. Another danger of commercial citric acid is that it may also contain a small amount of monosodium glutamate and other names are MSG or free glutaminic acid. This occurs during manufacturing when some of the protein from the corn or sugar beets is still present in the sugars that are fed to the black mold as described above. The residual protein ends up getting hydrolyzed during this fermentation process. The end result is the formation of free glutamic acid uh, or also known as MSG. If you feed certain sugars like cornstarch or sugar beets to the fungus Aspergillus niger, a common black mold, you end up with the artificial form of citric acid. It's a cheap, easy way to produce the food added. Just another link here, done a little bit different words. Ultimately, the black mold is filtered out, but some people believe the my mycotoxins, which are microscopic waste products left behind by the fungus, aren't entirely eliminated. Wellness experts worry that ingesting or inhaling these on the reg can be problematic because mold and mitotoxins, mycotoxins have been tied to respiratory issues, allergies, and even chronic illness. Plus the sugar added to the mold to make citric acid comes primarily from beets and corn, which are among the most commonly produced gen genetically modified organisms, GMOs. Uh, it's another link here saying it's off, often made with GMO ingredients. Some pages are, so here's the basis of the verdict on citric acid here. Some pages are saying how it's grass, which is generally recognized as safe and haven't really been studied much. Uh, I say I bought it because of the mold, that it's made from the mold. It uses GMO ingredients and has MSG in it. Just get vitamin C from whole non-processed food. So I'd say for sure, avoid it's not good for you. All right, so now the fourth one here is natural flavor. Now, despite their natural origins, natural flavors are very similar to artificial flavors. 
Natural flavors are highly processed and contain many chemical additives. Natural flavors aren't much different than artificial flavors in terms of chemical composition and health effects. From a health and safety standpoint, your best bet is to avoid foods with natural or artificial flavors. Every other link I looked at basically said the same thing. So, natural flavors, absolutely thumb down from everything I just told you. Everything was telling me it's basically the same or worse than basically artificial flavors, which you know artificial flavors are bad for you. So, that's what I'm saying. This is the trick I'm talking about. Come and try to use natural flavors, but yeah, it's, it's something not natural at all. It's just garbage. It's, it's false advertising, which really kind of pisses me off. If you're going to say, hey, this is what's in this product, and then you go into the consumer trusting this product, okay, I want to eat that. I think that's healthier. Natural is natural, and it's not natural at all. They're just screwing you over. All right, next ingredient is calcium lactate. Now, calcium lactate is produced by mixing lactic acid with calcium carbonate or calcium hydroxide. It's used as a calcium supplement and to fortify foods. Calcium lactate fills a variety of roles in the food industry as a firming agent, thickener, flavor enhancer, and leavening agent. Calcium lactate is a calcium salt resulting from the fermentation of lactic acid and calcium. Calcium lactate is used as a raising agent and shelf life enhancer in the baking industry. Basically, it's a supplement form of calcium that does have some side effects. The healthiest thing would be for you to get calcium from organic, whole, non-processed foods. I would personally avoid. Next ingredient, xanthan gum. And here's the good thing about all these ingredients. A lot of these ingredients are in all other processed foods and a lot of the foods that you're probably buying. So you can look when I'm telling you xanthan gum, these other ones, and now you know whether it's good or not. When you see this on the ingredient list, you know, and damn, oh, this, this, all these he told me were bad and, you know, researched them. I'm not just telling this, I have no, I'm not getting anything for this other than knowing that I'm helping people. So when you see these, you want to avoid these foods. All right. Next one is xanthan gum. Uh, xanthan gum is a substance produced by bacterial fermentation or synthetically and is used in in foods as a gelling agent and thickener. We are told that xanthan gum is perfectly safe to consume, so no, it's not bad for you. At least there have been no case studies up to this point saying that when consumed, it caused major harm, unless you count that trip to the bathroom as unsafe. Some report intestinal discomfort like bloating, gas, and even diarrhea when ingested. However, it's still an item that has really come out into mainstream only recently, so we as a public still don't know a whole lot about it other than it works miracles in gluten-free baking. So, should you avoid using it only if one, simply you don't want to use it, and two, you have an allergy towards the various common items which xanthan, xanthan can be derived from. Mainly corn, though research has shown that it can also derive from wheat and soy, though corn is the most common. If so, you might be having unknown reactions towards xanthan. I know some people who get very sick from it. Uh, also, it's made from a lab. I don't like that there. It's made from corn mostly. Corn is one of the most genetically modified organisms. It's one of the most GMO products that there is, or crops that there is. Uh, it's used in sunscreen, soap, shampoos, lotions, mouthwashes, etc. There are more than 3,400 different products that xanthan gum is. I don't like that something that you should be, you know, something you're eating this, but yet it's in sunscreen, it's in soap, it's in shampoo, it's in lotion, it's in mouthwash. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, to me, that's funky. That's funky cold Medina. I don't like that. So for me, xanthan gum, like I said, a lot of it's made from corn, number one, two, most GMO, basically one of the most GMO crop there is. No bueno. It's made in the lab. Right off the rip, made in the lab. I'm not eating anything made from lab. I suggest y'all avoid xanthan gum as well. Scorbic acid. Thousands of bottles of ascorbic acid are purchased every day under the misguided assumption that ascorbic acid is the same as vitamin C. In reality, ascorbic acid is an isolated nutrient that is part of vitamin C, but it is not the whole vitamin C. So you are getting cheated if you buy ascorbic acid thinking it is vitamin C, but that might be the least of the consequences you may suffer. Studies over the last several years have demonstrated that people who take high doses of ascorbic acid actually put themselves at risk of a number of health challenges. 
One study demonstrated that doses of 500 milligrams a day or more of ascorbic acid increased the incidence of arterial plaque buildup. Another study indicated that gallstones are more likely to appear in those taking ascorbic acid. Are these backlash studies against the health food industry? No, they are legitimate studies. Wait a minute, you may be thinking, what about all the studies done by Linus Pauling and a multitude of other reputable researchers who have proven the health promoting benefits of vitamin C and ascorbic acid. Let us put a little perspective on the subject. Back in the 1930s, ascorbic acid was isolated out of a little red pepper. The man who first performed this experiment was Dr. Albert Snett, uh, Jio Gries, like a German name or something, who won, a Nobel, who won a Nobel Prize for his work. What he also found was, has, what he also found, which has what he also found, which has mostly been ignored until recently, was that the ascorbic acid was far more biologically available and active while it was still in the red pepper. Scientists of the era of better living through chemistry and science, which we have been exper experiencing for the last 50 years, decided to take the discoveries about vitamin C and improve on Mother Nature. First, they found that extracting ascorbic acid from natural foods such as red pepper, cabbage, cranberries, gooseberries, or acerola berries is relatively expensive. Ascorbic acid can be created in the laboratory much less expensively and of, course, and of course much more profitably. Back to the money here. Scientists discovered that they could take corn syrup, mix it with hydrochloric acid and voila ascorbic acid. By the way, the corn is more likely than ever to be genetically modified and of course not organically grown. Years later, scientists discovered uh, what doctors sent Jio Gree had discovered about ascorbic acid. It is not as effective when detached from the whole food matrix. So they went about trying to determine what other factors there could be in a whole food that would make the ascorbic acid work better. First, they discovered the importance of bioflavonoids. So they figured out how to produce these synthetically in the laboratory to be added to the ascorbic acid. Then they found that ascorbic acid worked better as a mineral ascorbate and they worked on that. Then they found that the fat soluble ascorbic acid was superior because it went directly to the liver versus water soluble ascorbic acid. In fact, if you put 100 milligrams of ascorbic acid in the body within a few hours, at least 90% of it would be excreted in the urine. If you put 10 times more into the body to account for the 90% loss, it would cause diarrhea. So they experimented with various things and concluded that if you attach the ascorbic acid molecule to another molecule, in one case of a metabolite, the ascorbic acid will stay in the body longer. They didn't seem to care why it stayed in the body longer, but it stayed in the body longer and hopefully that was a good thing. Today there is a broad variety of ascorbic acid products and varieties and various things attached to them. With all this research time, thought, and dollars being put into creating a synthetic vitamin C, the fact remains that none of them can come re even come close to the potentials of what Mother Nature makes. One important factor that science has not been able to duplicate is the special kind of energy that holds living foods together. Whether this energy is found in the enzymes or the energy patterns of the whole food structures, it is unlikely that science will ever be able to reproduce it in the laboratory. This may be one of the several reasons why studies have shown that the body will absorb close to 100% of the vitamin C that is consumed as a part of a whole food, whereas barely 10% of the stripped down ascorbic acid. Uh, another link here. The winner 2009 edition of Wise Tradition cites three studies which gave pause about large doses of vitamin C. The first study from a June 15, 2001 issue of Science showed that synthetic vitamin C may contribute to the formation of genotoxins that can lead to cancer. A second study presented to the American Heart Association showed a link between cons consumption of only 500 milligrams of vitamin C per day and a greatly propensity toward thickening of the arteries. Los Angeles Times, March 2000, that's a little parenthesis inside that. Even more recently, athletes taking 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C per day showed reduced endurance capacity from interference with antioxidant enzymes. It's American Journal of Clin Clinical Nutrition, January 2008. This information should give pause to anyone who is actively taking synthetic vitamin C supplements such as those emergency packets that are available everywhere from pharmacies and health food stores to even gas stations. If you are a fan of Linus Pauling who popularized the notion of huge doses of vitamin C for the common cold in the 1970s, consider this. GMO vitamin C did not exist when Pauling was conducting his studies. GMO derived vitamin C 
is what people are originally taking today. What's more, these studies inducing the danger of high doses of vitamin C over long periods of time had not been done yet. They were conducted long after Pauline died in 1994. What's worth is that ascorbic acid is not just synthetic. Remember that is also usually derived from genetically modified corn. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you basically yes or no on that one. I am absolutely not again on ascorbic acid. It's crazy, man. Next ingredient is stevia leaf extract. Now, stevia is a non-nutritive sweetener. That means that it has almost no calories. If you're trying to lose weight, this aspect may be appealing. However, to date, research is inclusive. The impact of non-nutritive sweetener on an individual's health may depend on the amount that is consumed as well as the time of day it is consumed. There's, there's concern that the raw stevia herb may harm your kidneys, reproductive system, and cardiovascular system. It may also drop blood pressure too low or interact with medications that lower blood sugar. The appeal of these stevia-based sweeteners, as I mentioned previously, is that they're derived from a plant not concocted in a lab, so that's a good thing. But to say that these sweeteners are completely natural or unprocessed isn't quite accurate, as the Rebiana is extracted from the stevia leaf using chemicals. I don't like that. CSPI believes that Rebiana's generally recognized as safe status was granted prematurely uh, by the FDA. They don't state specific side effects or health concerns from using it, but point out that the FDA didn't mandate that the extract be tested in both rats and mice prior to approval, which is the normal. So basically saying they gave it the, the grass stamp, which is generally recognized as safe, the grass. They, they gave it prematurely by the FDA because they didn't run the, the uh, test on the rats and mice prior, which is normally what's supposed to be done. Stevia leaf extract has been studied and no significant adverse effects have been reported. There's always the risk of an allergic reaction, but that's likely rare. And there have been some reports of stevia sweeteners causing bloating, nausea, and diarrhea. In 1991, the FDA refused to approve stevia as a sweetener as an additive in foods. However, in 2008, after the pump purification process was developed and patented by coca-cola the fda approved the status approved the stevia extract as grass generally recognized as safe pretty damn fishy to me uh <laughs> that it, it was basically refused and then when coca-cola or well, did say they uh, after the purification process was developed by patented by coca-cola um and we all know coca-cola is gonna be a product i do but Everybody knows Coke's not good for it. All right, anyway, it is more dangerous when coupled with other artificial sweeteners such as erythritol, the number, number two ingredient in this food, which is in this flavor and it makes the erythritol more dangerous as well. So them both being together make each one even more harmful to you. So, so I do keep seeing saying say it's safe to eat, but it's processed and like I said, uh, it didn't become, it was first denied and then when Coke patented it, they. Uh, allowed it and then also they approved it without testing on mice and uh, rats first which is which is the norm it was what I found so that's kind of iffy too personally I would avoid it uh, like I said do honey or something like that like I wouldn't be adding anything like that like I said and it's not natural so for me stevie leaf extract gets a thumbs down next ingredient potassium citrate it is being referred to as a medication like some of the other ingredients as a food additive, potassium citrate is used to regulate acidity. Potassium citrate is produced by adding potassium bicarbonate or potassium carbonate to a solution of citric acid until effervescence ever ceases. Filtering the solution and evaporating to granulation. Potassium citrate is usually administered by mouth in dilute aqueous solution. This is because of its somewhat causes caustic effect on the stomach lining and the potential for other mild health hazards. Large doses over the recommended amount may cause cardiac arrhythmia, which I believe that's irregular heartbeat. Uh, processed foods often contain potassium citrate as an additive. Now, I'm personally gonna say to avoid potassium citrate. Like I said, it says it could be dangerous to your stomach lining and all, and it just keeps saying it's a Loris. I mean, it's mainly in processed foods, basically. And it's a common processed foods additive. So just that alone, that you find it mainly 
and majority of processed foods right there is just a red flag common sense will tell you one processed foods aren't good for you and then this ingredients always in processed food so more than likely it's processed like i said and there is some health uh risk i saw there and just you know if it's funky around it and all it's just like if it's iffy i just i'm i'm not risking my health or anything on it so thumbs down on that all right next ingredient black carrot juice concentrate uh it is a natural food color the nutrients in black carrot extract that give it it color or anthocyanins i may pronounce some of these are some you know complicated words the anthocyanins and black carrot extract provide many health benefits several from its antioxidant properties research in the march 2011 issue of the journal of agricultural and food chemistry notes a correlation between anthocyanins and the potential for treating neurological dysfunctions such as alzheimer's disease anthocyanins may also be useful in cancer treatment evidence published in the may 2011 molecular nutrition and food research journal indicates that anthocyanins may counteract toxins that can damage cells healthy cells during chemotherapy uh safe slash okay to eat extracted in a non-processed way so i give here we go we finally got one other than the water <laughs> Black carrot juice concentrate, I do give it a thumbs up. Like I said, I, I, you know, what I found was it's natural. It's been studied and shown there's actual benefits to it and it's extracted in a non-processed way and it's safe slash okay to eat. So all thumbs up there. So we finally got one thumbs up there. Black carrot juice concentrate, I do give a thumbs up. On to the next one here. Next one here, we've got ginger extract safe and okay to eat also extracted in a natural non-processed way that's the only ingredient that's the only uh little notes i took on that ginger extract is good as well it was safe and okay to eat again also extracting it in a natural non-processed way it's just an extract from ginger uh some of these things like this are like a lot of us find are kind of like supplements like just a ginger extract you could probably go you just buy the ginger extract so well, i just put a couple notes like that like everything i was seeing was just positive 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 so i just basically put that it was a safe and okay to eat i found that and that it was extracted in a non-processed way it's the only because ginger extract that may be healthy but it's like how is it processed and all is a really big component and is it really healthy in the end product as well so ginger extract gets a thumbs up as well the next one is cochineal extract. This one is very interesting here. Check this one out. It's basically ground up bugs, no BS. Anytime you see an ingredient list that includes carmine, carminic acid, cochineal extract, or natural red four, you can be sh sure that there's a little powdered bug therein. Starbucks is coming under fire from vegans for using ground up bugs to color its frappuccinos but the use of cochineal insects is actually common in the food industry. I'm about to pop all this whole page up here. I saved this page just for this. So how do they turn these little insects into food coloring that you see every day? It's quite a process. The cochineal insect is native to Mexico and South America. And contrary to the popular nomenclature, they are not technically beetles. They are tiny and live on cactus plants. Usually the prickly pear cactus are actual bugs. Female in, or insects. Female insects eat the red cactus berries, which concentrates the color in their bodies. See all the red residue behind, left by squish, this squished bug. So how do you harvest them? There are two methods, traditionally and controlled, and both the insects must produce, must be, prote be, must be protected from predators and the elements. Each cycle lasts about three months. The controlled way uses these little baskets called Zempotec nests, which contain female insects. They lit. They leave the nest, do the work on the cactus, and breed before the cycle is over. In the traditional way, farmers plant infected plant, cactus plants and harvest the insects by hands. Once all the insects are collected, farmers pour them into a wooden plank. For five to six minutes, the farmers will shake the insects in a process that will eventually kill them while retaining their dark colors. There are other ways to kill the bugs, like using a vat of hot water or an oven. Once they are dead, they are left outside in the sun for two to three days to dry. It's not recommended to leave them out overnight as the humidity will delay the drying process. Then they are shaken in a strainer to remove excess residue. Whichever process you use, it takes a whopping 70,000 cochineal bugs to make just one pound of cochineal dye. 
Peru alone produces 200 tons of the dye each year. Here, museum educator Bob Aldering shows how easily the dye, the dried buds can be turned into red dye. First, he crushes them, then he puts the powder on a dish and dabs some water on it. A quick stir and voila, cochinol dry dye comes in two basic forms. Cochinol extract, the bodies of the pulverized bugs, and carmine, which is further processed to create more purified color. So, what do I gotta say about that one? Absolutely hell no. Absolutely hell no on the cochinol extract. Or, like I said, so avoid cochinol extract and avoid, cause they're all kind of, it's all basically the same. Avoid the carmine, the carminic acid, the cochinol extract, and the natural red four. All four of those you wanna, anytime you see those on the ingredient list, don't eat it because that's, that's what it is, is ground up bugs. All right, next ingredient is caramel color. All right, this one sounds innocent and all, but let's get into it. All right, caramel color has a cancerous compound in it called 4-mel. In 2007, a federal government study concluded that 4-mel caused cancer in mice and in the International Agency for Research on Cancer determined the chemical to be possibly carcinogenic to humans. That means cancer causing in 2011. There's no federal limit for levels of formal in foods and beverages, but as of January 7th, 2012, California requires manufacturers to label a product sold in the state with a cancer warning if it exposes consumers to more than 29 micrograms of formal per day. We also are petitioning the Food and Drug Administration to set a federal standard for formal and in the meantime to require manufacturers to list the type of caramel color they use on their products ingredients list. That's important because there are four types of caramel coloring. Only the two made with ammonia compounds contain formal. However, the manufacturers can use the general term artificial color interchangeably with caramel color. So if you see artificial color, avoid that as well. Europe, Europe has labeling requirements and consumers in the United States should have the right to make an informed choice about what they are drinking and eating, says Dr. Rangan. The caramel coloring used in Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and other foods and contaminated is contaminated with two cancer causing chemicals and should be banned according to a regulatory petition filled today by the Center for Science and Public in the Public Interest. The contrast to the caramel one might ha make at home by melting sugar in a saucepan, the artificial brown color in colas and some other products is made by reacting sugars with ammonia and sulfites under high pressure and temperatures. Chemicals reaction Chemical reactions result in the formation of 2-methylimidazole and 4-methylimidazole. That's the 2-male and basically the 4-male, I believe, which is in government conducted studies, which in government conducted studies cause lung, liver, or thyroid cancer or leukemia in laboratory mice or rats. The National Toxicity Program the division of the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences that conducted the animal study said that there is clear evidence that both 2-MI and 4-MI are animal carcinogens. Again, many it causes cancer. So 100 million percent always avoid caramel color and if you see it says artificial color as well because they could be interchangeable here in the US. Like I said, if you're in, I know I have viewers abroad as well. I have some in Ecuador and the UK and almost kind of all over, which is freaking awesome. Shout out to y'all people watching as well. Right here, Europe, Europe has labeling requirements. And can, okay, so Europe, you, you'll, your label will either tell you if it's caramel color or artificial color, but here in the US, it just said, it can just say artificial color, which could mean caramel color. So that can kind of hide it a little bit. So 100 million percent, no thumbs down on the caramel color. So after that, you're just looking at uh, other ingredients that I skipped over were just the vitamins. I didn't even like research and then that's just, you know, some vitamins in there. So the next flavor here is the acai raspberry. Now all the second ingredient here, we did not go over. So first you got water. water. Second one, you got fumaric acid. All right, so fermic acid exists naturally in a bolet mushrooms or bolete mushrooms, Icelandic moss and lichen, and human skin naturally produces the acid when it's exposed to sunlight. As a food additive, fermic acid is produced synthetically. 
Sorry, no, I'm about to tell you, no, this ain't good. Fermerimic acid has recently been identified as a as an oncometabolite or an endogenous cancer-causing metabolite. Fermeric acid is found to be associated with fumarase deficiency, which is an inborn error of metabolism used to make paints and plastics and food processing and preservation and for other uses. It is an intermediate metabolite in the citric acid cycle. So absolutely not. <laughs> You want to make sure, like I said, it's uh, basically a cancer-causing metabolite uh, used to make paints and plastic too. It's just, and it's in the citric acid metabolite of the citric acid cycle as well. And citric acid is thumbed down. So this one's extra bad though because of, of uh, it being an endogenous cancer-causing metabolite. So fermeric acid, if you see this again, thumbs down like crazy. Like it's crazy. It's blow like. The companies are putting this in their food, knowing this, and just okay, lucky ducky. Like, how as a how as just a human being could you sell that to somebody? You know, so how could you sell that to somebody? Here's some damn poison um, in your food here, and uh, just eat that and just pay me, and then I'm, I'm happy because I got the money, right? Like, how the hell? That's so messed up. So for sure, 100% no on the firmer acid. Now the next one we'll jump down to, all these other ones have no, I believe the next one here, let's see where this one's at. Okay, so we went over the, the stevia leaf, the natural flavor, potassium. The next one we didn't go over here, all these other ones got no's I believe, I'll put it, yeah I believe all the other ones got no's, got no, 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 no. Alright, the next one we didn't go over was the purple sweet potato juice concentrate. All right, so no studies and not much information on it. Everything I see says it's a natural food color, so I guess it's okay. I can't say 100% since I don't know the method used to extract the color. That's basically all I could find. Let's say I can say about that because I really, again, I couldn't find much on it. So I would think it would be okay, but again, I don't know 100% because I don't know the, the uh, basically the, the process of which they extract it. So I believe all these other ones here, vitamin, vitamin. Cochinol extract, you know, they avoid that. Other ones are vitamins. So now we move on to the Fuji apple pear. And the only the ingredients I didn't do out of that were the Garcinia Combogia rind extract. It's contributed to at least several. Or right, let me go through this first before we get there. So filtered water, good. Erythritol, not good. Natural flavor, not good. Citric acid, not good. Ascorbic acid, no. And now we're on the Garcinia Combogia Rind Extract. Okay, it's com contributed to at least several patients winding up in the hospital with liver failure and needing emergency liver transplant. Aside from liver damage, other Garcinia Combogia side effects that can occur include becoming fuzzy or weak, fatigue and brain fog, skin rashes, an increase in catching cold slash lower immune function, dry mouth and bad breath, headaches, digestive issues like nausea, trouble eating or diarrhea, Garcinia combogia can potentially interact badly with pregnancy and breastfeeding, existing cases of liver and kidney damage, medications that are taken to control asthma and allergies, diabetes medications and insulin, iron supplements usually taken by people with anemia, pain medications, medications used to control mental disorders like anxiety and depression, statin drugs and lower cholesterol, blood thinning drugs like warfarin. Garcinia combogia is used for weight reduction, raising concerns about development endpoints such as fetal size and ossification. Several limited clinical trial studies studying the effectiveness of Garcinia combogia extract on weight loss have produced contradictory results. No standards or guidelines have been set by the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH, or the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is OSHA. Garcinia Combogia extract are not listed, is not listed on the American Conference of Governmental Industry Hygienist list of compounds for which recommendations for a threshold limit value or biological exposure index are made. So basically saying there's no, they hadn't really put recommendations like to how much you shouldn't uh, take basically. No available two-year animal studies or literature are available. Pretty much everything I'm seeing from supplementation of Garcinia Combogia extract, I'm seeing some things saying there are health benefits and other sources saying the harms. 
I would avoid just because of the dangers of it. The small health claims that are being claimed by it can be achieved through a healthy whole food diet, proper sleep and exercise. No need to try and get the minute benefits from this and take on all the risks. All right, next ingredient here. All right, let's see. Xanthan gum, we know no. Calcium lactate, no. Potassium citrate, we know no. Rev A, which is purified stevia extract, we know no. We know it's a no. The next one, modified food starch. Okay, modified food starch has virtually no nutritional value. It is used widely in processed foods right there off the rip. <laughs> that should tell you no. All right, modified food starch is complex. It's a complex carbohydrate that has had one or more of its components altered physically, chemically, or enzymatically, which I don't like that. It's been altered physically, chemically, or enzymatically. Modified does not necessarily mean genetically modified. However, some modified starches are likely made from genetically modified organisms. These days, you can find modified starch in almost every processed food. Modified food starches can be made from a variety of foods, including corn, which I said is one of the most GMO um, crops there is, waxy maize, topica, potato or wheat. There does not appear to be any research indicating that modified cornstarch is dangerous to our health. However, processed foods are detrimental to health. Be on the lookout for this ingredient if you are eliminating gluten from your diet. Wheat will be indicated on the product's labeling if wheat was the starch base because the other starches may be contaminated with gluten during their manufacturing. However, it is recommended that anyone following a gluten-free diet avoid modified food starch. The accepted answer to this question is that modified food starch is harmless. Modified food starch doesn't really have any nutritional value, but it does serve a useful purpose in processed foods. The one concern noted is that manufacturing of modified food starch is not transparent. There is virtually no way to find out how the modified food starch is being produced or in a there's Virtually no way to find out how the modified food starch used in a product was produced, what chemical or enzymes were used, if used at all, for example, and the possibility of trace chemical contamination bothers some. It is heavily pro it is a heavily processed ingredient. Modified food starch is bad for you. The ingredient is treated with potentially harmful chemicals and has a high risk of contamination. So, absolutely not. I give modified food starch. A thumbs down. Just really off the rail of just the name itself kind of should <laughs> cause a little bit of pause. Modified food starch. All right, so modified food starch thumbs down for sure for me. I personally am avoiding, do avoid, and suggest y'all avoid as well. The next ingredient here is L-carnitine. L-carnitine is derived from an amino acid. It's found in nearly all cells of the body. Its name is derived from the Latin cornus or flesh as the compound was isolated from meat. Carnitine has been studied extensively because it is important to energy production and is well tolerated and generally safe therapeutic agent. Researchers prefer to use acetyl l carnitine in research studies because it, because it is better absorbed from the small intestine than l carnitine and more effic efficiently crosses the blood-brain barrier at doses of approximately 3 grams a day, carnitine supplements can cause nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, diarrhea, and a fishy body odor. Rare side effects include muscle weakness in urinic patients and seizures in those with seizure disorders. Some research indicates that intestinal bacteria metabolize carnitine to form a substance called TMAO that might increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. This effect appears to be more pronounced in people who consume meat than in vegans or vegetarians. The implication of these findings are not well understood and require more research. It plays a crucial role in energy production as it is responsible for transporting fatty acids in the mitochondria. It's a supplement. Uh, in one study, people who took three grams every day for 21 days experienced no negative effects. In one review of l carnitine safety, doses of approximately two grams per day appeared to be safe for long-term use, however, there were some mild side effects, including nausea and stomach discomforts. However, L-carnitine supplements may raise your blood levels of trimethylamine in oxide, which is TMA TMAO. Over time, high levels of TMAO are linked to an increased risk of atherosclerosis, a disease which clogs your arteries. More studies on the safety of L-carnitine supplements are needed. 
The new research suggests that L-carnitine, either from red meat or taken in supplement form, poses a threat to your heart. Prior to the latest research, we've prompt promoted this supplement on this show. Researchers claim that it, it could increase energy, speed up weight loss, and improve athletic performance. Some energy drinks add L-carnitine for this reason. Now I'm saying don't take it. Oh, that's true from Dr. Oz. That's why I said on this show. But see, all this was supplement form. It didn't really say much about it being in like how it's used more so in the food or like why it's added in the food or why they're doing it. So I personally would avoid just for the heart risk there. I uh, would suggest y'all avoid as well. So on to the next ingredient. Uh, vitamin E acetate. It is often used in de dermatological products such as skin creams. Tocopherol acetate is now oxidized and can penetrate through the skin to the living cells where about 5% is converted to free tocopherol. Claims are made for beneficial antioxidant effects. It is combined with acet acetic acid which is actually the main ingredient in vinegar. Together they make tocopherol acetate which is favored for use in products over regular vitamin E because it's more stable and doesn't go bad as quickly. Cautions and high doses can cause skin irritation. It is also found in dietary supplements. Vitamin E is likely safe for most people when taken by mouth or applied to the skin. Most people do not experience any side effects when taking the recommended daily dose, which is at 15 milligrams. Tocopherol acetate is considered a modern, a moderate hazard by the Environmental Working Group's cosmetics database which notes concerns regarding cancer contamination of hydroquinone and FDA restricted whitening compound and organ system toxicity. The CIR demonstrates strong evidence that it is a human skin toxicant and in vitro tests on mammalian cells showed positive mutation results linking it to cancer. A study at Tel Aviv University found that indiscriminate intake of vitamin E can cause more harm than good. It has also been determined that tocopherol acetate is a skin synthesizer that can inject and instigate immune system responses such as itching, burning, scaling hives, and blistering of skin. A 1991 study published in Contact Dermatitis found that four cases of contact dermatitis were caused by cosmetic creams that contain tocopherol acetate, which is just the vitamin E acetate. Uh, despite toxicity concerns, tocopherol acetate is FDA approved and has received its grass, which is generally recognized as a safe rating. Uh, this ingredient is basically a form of vitamin E created in the laboratory. Don't like that. Manufacturers take natural vitamin E and add acid acetic acid to it. Acetic acid is the main compound of vinegar. The word acid means just what you think. It's corrosive and attacks the skin. A simple carboxylic acid is it's used in the production of chemicals for photographic film, wood glue, and synthetic fibers and fabrics. Why wood manufacturers mix? Perfectly good vitamin E with this irritating ingredient. Two words, cheaper and longer lasting. Adding the acid to vitamin E makes it last longer on the shelves. That makes it easier for manufacturers to process, ship, store, and sell their products. Of all the potential harmful ingredients, this is probably one of the milder ones. It is vitamin E, which can have some benefits. The thing is, why not just stick with natural vitamin E? Why take the risk with taco feral acetate when you don't have two? So I give it a thumbs down. On to the next ingredient, which is so we got calcium phosphate. All right, calcium phosphate is the next ingredient. Calcium phosphate is used to prevent and to treat calcium deficiency. The kind of calcium in your bones and teeth is calcium phosphate. It's a type of calcium supplement. Stick to natural sources when it comes to calcium unless a doctor recommends otherwise. If getting enough calcium is a concern for you, calcium carbonate and calcium citrate are likely your best options. Calcium phosphate can be used as a supplement to increase your calcium and phosphorus intake, but if it's also used as a food additive, excuse me, but it's also used as a food additive, calcium phosphate can help thicken 
stabilize and firm foods. It's also used to help blend oil and water-based ingredients, prevent caking, retain moisture, regulate acidity, and treat flour. Not surprisingly, calcium phosphate is found in many processed foods. People with chronic kidney disease may need to watch their calcium phosphate intake however as it could adversely affect their health if they get too much phosphorus preventing or treating a calcium deficiency is the main benefit you'll gain from taking calcium phosphate i saw a lot of health risk to phosphate in foods and although i am not 100 sure i am pretty sure calcium phosphate fall under the category since it is phosphate since it has phosphate in its name I suggest avoiding it when in foods you can get calcium from eating whole non-processed foods and then if you still weren't getting enough I would first suggest eating more whole non-processed foods with calcium and secondly getting an organic calcium supplement and checking the ingredients label to make sure all the ingredients are healthy and there are no fillers and garbage. Okay so thumbs down on that or you just heard my final verdict basically on that. That was those last part was just my notes there. Next ingredient is gum arabic. <laughs> Gum Arabic is used in the food industry as a stabilizer, emulsifier, and thickening agent in icing, filling, soft candy, chewing gum, and other confectionery, and to bind the sweeteners and flavors in soft drinks. Uh, gum Arabic is a natural gum consisting of the hardened sap of various species of the Asasia tree. Gum Arabic is indigestible by humans, meaning it isn't broken down in the intestines, but instead ferments in the colon. This leads to a range of possible health benefits, including acting as a prebiotic, feeding good probiotic bacteria, enhancing gut health, helping with fullness and appetite control, and potentially aiding in regulation of body fat, insulin, and cholesterol. With high doses of gum Arabic above 10 to 30 grams daily, don't seem to pose any major health risk. Consuming large amounts may lead to gas, diarrhea, indigestion, and bloating. It is non-carcinogenic soluble fiber which can be added to foods to give a number of functional benefits without changing the food's texture or adding significant color. I will give gum arabic a thumbs up by itself, okay? But most of the foods it is added to are processed foods and drinks, which is the case with Sobe Life Water. So if you find it in a food or drink, I would avoid it personally because of all the other harmful ingredients in the product. Okay, on to the next one here. And Panax Ginseng Root Extract. I give this a thumbs up. It is just like buying the supplement form of ginseng, I believe, because I have Asian ginseng in my pantry and the ingredients say Asian Ginseng Root Extract. The only thing I'm not sure of is how they're extracting it and if it would be a different extraction method when used for just supplements versus in beverages. Still, I give it a thumbs up. There are a lot of health benefits to ginseng. Again, by itself a thumbs up, but since it's in this product, all these other garbage ingredients, I would say no whole, but for just the ingredient, I would give it a thumbs up. Okay, I believe that's it. No, we got one more here. Chromium Pico Linate. All right, some people use Chromium Pico Linate I don't know if I'm saying some of the things right, but in an attempt to treat chromium deficiency, control blood sugar, improve depression in people with polycystic ovary syndrome, lower cholesterol, or to aid in weight loss. Chromium deficiency is rare and studies have not yet confirmed the benefits of taking supplements, so it's best to obtain chromium through food. However, large doses of chromium in supplement form can cause stomach problems, low blood sugar, and kidney or liver damage. Chromium deficiency appears to be rare, and there are concerns that the picolinate form of chromium could produce harmful effects in the body. Vegetables such as broccoli, potatoes, and green beans have them, uh, whole grain products, beef and poultry, fruits including apples and bananas, grape juice, milk, and dairy products are all ones you can find it, uh, chromium picolinate in or whatever. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. The Institute of Medicine has not established a tolerable upper level intake level for this mineral. A upper limit is the maximum daily intake and of a nutrient that is unlikely to cause adverse health effects. Research indicating it causes damage to DNA. A bottom line is you skip this, the picolante form in favor of the GTF chromium or the chromium chelate. So there you go. So, skip chromium picolante. All right, I believe that's it for... No, nope, we got one more here. So, 
Uh, that's a B6, let's get that. Right, so, so the beta carotene for the color here, the human body converts beta carotene into vitamin A, which is retinol. Beta carotene is a precursor of vitamin A. We need vitamin A for healthy skin and mucous membranes, our immune system, and good eye and vision. Vitamin A can be sourced from food we, that we eat, though beta carotene, for example, uh, we need vitamin A for healthy skin and mucous membranes, our immune system, and good eye health and vision. Vitamin A can be sourced from the food we eat through beta carotene, for example, or in supplement form. Natural ingredients, beta carotene, that's from Color Maker. Although abundant and extractable from various sources, the beta carotene utilized by the cutter. Although abundant and extractable from various sources, the beta carotene utilized by the color industry is made synthetically. DDW's, this is a, uh, like a, like a company, I believe. Like the DDW is a company, a coloring company. DDW offers both natural and nature identical forms of beta carotene that perform similarly in applications. Provide a clean label color solution at low usage rates. These products provide bright yellow hues that can replace tartarazine slash yellow fiber beverages and other applications. There are natural and synthetic versions used to color products. Most beta carotene is derived from algae or is synthesized. So I give it a thumbs down because there's no real way to know if it's natural or if it's a synthetic form of it. So that's why I give it a thumbs down. Let's see what the next ingredient is here. I believe that's it for the Fuji apple pear. Now I believe we're on to, yep, the pomegranate cherry here. So filtered water, we good. Sugar, thumbs down. Natural flavor, thumbs down. Citric acid, thumbs down. Ascorbic acid, thumbs down. Potassium citrate, thumbs down. Calcium lactate, thumbs down. Cochinol, thumbs down. Now we go up to taurine. All right, taurine, an amino acid important in several of the body's metabolic, metabolic processes. It's thought to have antioxidant properties, but little is known about the effects of the long-term supplementation, supplemental taurine use. Taurine is found naturally in meat, fish, dairy products, and human milk, and it's also available as a dietary supplement. According to the best available evidence, taurine has no negative side effects when used in the recommended amounts. It's just a supplement basically, so alone I will give taurine a thumbs up, but again, mixed with all the other garbage, it would be not, it would not be healthy, so I say no, like overall, but again, taurine by itself, yeah. Okay, on to the next ingredient. Uh, we got the purified stevia leaf extract, it's a thumbs down, vitamin, fine, let's see if this is the next one. Vitamin fine, panax ginseng root, you know, we gave that one a thumbs up. All right, we got elderberry juice concentrate. Elderberry juice color is extracted from elderberries and then concentrated using ultra filtration. This natural color is available as a liquid or a powder and can be labeled as fruit juice for color. Fruit juice or color. Uh, elderberry concentrates are high performing 100% fruit juice based colors with minimal taste with an aroma impact not synthetic and processed by physical means like it's not synthetic and it's processed by physical means like crushing pressing filtering uh citric acid and invert sugar may be used for the standardization purposes which i don't like for from the little bit i could find on elderberry juice concentrate i think it's okay but the data is limited so i personally would avoid Okay, and then every other ingredient here, the vitamin B6, B12, okay, so we're to go with the pomegranate cherry, black and blueberry flavor here, water fine, erythritol, nope, citric acid, no, black carrot juice concentrate, I believe I gave that one a yes, ascorbic acid, no, calcium lactate, no, xanthan gum, I believe I gave that one a yes, natural flavor, no, potassium citrate, no, red bay slash purified stimulate extract, no, Grapeseed extract. Okay, that's what we're on. Grapeseed extract. It's a supplement as well. All I'm seeing is positive and, and benefits, which a lot of have been proven through scientific studies. There are still the common possible side effects that I've seen with all supplements. There's no limit set on how much one should take, so I say it's fine uh, in the drink and as well as a standalone product. So next one here, we're gonna be going to tartaric acid, the next ingredient. 
Tartar acid is an important food additive that is commonly combined with baking soda to function as a leavening agent in recipes. Tartaric acid naturally occurs in plants like grapes, apricots, apples, bananas, avocados, and tamarinds. It is, all, it is added in foods giving a sour taste and serving as an antioxidant. The acid is lauded with antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that keep the immune system healthy. Tartaric acid aids digestion, improving intestinal function. It improves glucose tolerance and it also improves intestinal absorption. Only consume in moderation since overconsumption can lead to gastric problems. Commercial production. Byproducts obtained from wine manufacturers for the basis for the commercial production of tartar acid. The sediments and other waste products that result from the fermentation of wine are heated with calcium hydroxide and a base. This causes calcium tartrate to form a precipitate which is then treated with sulfuric acid to produce a combination of calcium sulfate and tartaric acid. After separation, the tartaric acid is then purified for commercial use. Uh, this one I started looking, I was like, because uh, it results from the fermentation of wine and are heated with calcium hydroxide. That's the base. So I looked up uh, food grade calcium hydroxide is generally safe. However, if you work with industrial grade calcium hydroxide ingestion, it can cause calcium hydroxide poison. This can lead to severe injury or death. And then since it said uh, treated with sulfuric acid to produce a combination, I looked up sulfuric acid. This chemical is unique because it's not only causes chemical burns, but also secondarily thermal burns as a result of dehydration. This dangerous chemical is capable of corroding skin, paper, metals, and even stone in some cases. If sulfuric acid makes direct contact with the eyes, it can cause permanent blindness. Both non-synthetic and synthetic forms of L-tartaric acid, referred to simply as tartaric acid, are available for commercial use. I think if the tartaric acid is non-synthetic, then it would be okay, and if it was synthetic, then I would say it wouldn't be. And since it doesn't have to be labeled differently, I would say avoid and just get the acid naturally from the foods that I first listed where you can actually get them from. All right, on to the next one here. Let's see, vitamin, 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 vitamin. Okay, so now we're done with the black and blueberry flavor. On to the blood orange mango flavor. Water good, citric acid no, tartaric acid no. Purified stevia leaf extract no, gum Arab, Arabic yes, potassium citrate no, calcium lactate no, xanthan gum yes, natural flavor no, glycerol ester of rosin, that's where we're at now. Glycerol ester of wood rosin is its full name. Refined wood rosin is pumped into a batch type reactor and ester filed with food grade glycerol. The reaction is allowed to proceed under samples of ester fired material meet the desired of ester fired material until they meet the desired product specifications. Example, give it acid number, color, and softening point. The glycerol ester of wood rosin is then purified with steam stripping or by direct countercurrent steam distillation after cooling. The glycerol ester of wood rosin is subjected to filtration and the hot resin is fed into a, a pastilles making unit and cooked to room temperature. The purified glycerol ester of wood rosin pastilles are freshly packed into plastic bags which are immediately sealed to protect against aging and oxidation. Glycerol ester of rosin is considered by many to be the best and most natural option for achieving stability in beverages. Glycerol, it can be derived naturally as well from petrochemical feedstock. It's low toxicity. Glycerin is generally set. Now, the reason I'm going for glycerol and glycerin is the same thing here is because here, uh, an esterified, because it refined wood rosin is pumped into a batch type reactor and esterified with food grade glycerol. So I wanted to see during this uh, process in here, what's up with this other ingredient that's being used on it. Uh, it can be derived naturally as well as from petrochemical feedstock. That's from this is all glycerol here. It's low toxicity, glycerin is generally safe. I would personally avoid glycerol since it can be made from petrochemical feedstock and there's no way of knowing unless we contact Sobe and hope they tell us the truth. I'm basically finding insufficient data on the health effects of it according to European Food Safety Authority. They keep saying they need to do more studying and specify this and that and more. So, uh, so this one is kind of iffy for me and if something is iffy I say no to it. I suggest you do the same again. This is a food additive in processed foods. 
processed foods by itself as a red flag. On to the next one here, which is going to be, let's see, so, where are we at? All right, that's a vitamin, good, good. Cushionol extract, I know we gave that one a thumbs down. Black carrot juice concentrate, believe that one got a thumbs up. Next one here is sunflower oil. Uh, I recently received an email asking if sunflower seed oil was a healthier option than other oils. The simple answer is, simple answer is no, it is not a healthy option at all. Essential fatty acids are a type of fat your body needs in order to perform a number of important functions. Essential fatty acids cannot be synthesized in the body, so it is essential you consume them in your diet. There are two different types of essential fatty acids found in food. The first type is called alpha linolenic acid or ALA and is an omega-3 type of fatty acid. This type of uh, essential fatty acid is found in fatty fish, nuts, seeds, certain types of sea vegetables and algae. Generally speaking, these sources of essential fatty acids are not common in the Western diet. The second type of essential fatty acids uh, is called linoleic acid or just LA and is an omega-6 type of fatty acid. Omega-6 is found in meats, vegetables, oils, and prepackaged processed foods. These sources are much more common in the Western diet. The latest estimates show that most people have an omega-6 to omega-3 ratio of 10 to 1. This is very problematic because high levels of omega-6 increase the inflammation inside your body. It's supposed to be a 1 to 1 ratio. The optimum ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids recommendations for good health is one to one. In other words, you should consume equal parts of each type of oil. Fortunately, the average diet provides large amounts of omega-6 and very small amounts of omega-3. Sunflower seed oil is commonly used in frying, fast food prep, and packaged and processed foods. It is so prevalent, I can almost guarantee you that if a food comes in a package, you'll find sunflower seed oil in the ingredient list. It's really bad for inflammation having it uh, that much more omega-6. Even if you don't heat refined sunflower oil in your home after you buy it, the likelihood is that it has already been heated to temperatures that denature it prior to your purchase at the store. Processed sunflower oil also may very possibly contain trace amounts of carcinogenic solvents from this processing. Shockingly, even after the chemical extraction of sunflower oil from the seeds, the oil may be refined further. This removes still more nutrients resulting in a a low nutrient fat that has no place in the diet so no for that and again it's not like it's organic it's probably looked up like the, the it's not the healthiest oil you could eat still but if you could even buy it in its most healthiest organic form and all on all the right specifications that it still wouldn't be a healthy option to use and since it's in the Sobe life water here it's not organic stamp of approval not the USDA stamp you know that it's not the most healthiest option so definitely avoid uh, the sunflower oil just in general as well and like for sure for sure in this food and any other uh, processed foods as well so now I believe that's it for this one because we got the vitamins 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 okay now we're on to let's see I believe the dragon fruit one we'll run through this one so this is a strawberry dragon fruit flavor uh, filter water good erythritol no firmer acid no xanthan gum yes natural flavor no calcium lactate no red bay slash purified CBA extract, no potassium citrate, no ascorbic acid, no purple sweet potato juice. I believe that one was a yes. Corsinia combogia rind extract, I believe it was a no. Vitamins fine, vitamins fine, vitamins fine. L carnitine, no. Panax ginseng root extract, yes. And the B12 is fine. So on to the strawberry kiwi. And I believe this was the only one I couldn't actually find. Okay, that's one of two I couldn't find the actual ingredient like picture of the list. So filter water, yes. Sugar, no. Erythritol, no. Natural flavor, no. Firmer acid, no. Potassium citrate, no. Ascorbic acid, no. Calcium lactate, no. Modified food starch, no. Purple sweet potato juice, I believe that one was a yes. Lemon balm leaves extract. So on to the next one here. Lemon balm is perennial. Is a perennial herb from the mint family. It's a leaf. In foods and beverages, the extract in all form of lemon balm are used for flavoring the many uses for lemon balm uh used in cooking and herbal tea recipes this lemon scented herb sometimes called toronjil is also found in the extract salve tincture or oil form often said to help ease stress and anxiety lemon balm contains rosemarinic acid a chemical compound with antioxidant properties 
possible side effects. Side effects of lemon balm can include headache, nausea, bloating, gas, vomiting, ingestion, dizziness, stomach pain, painful urination, anxiety, agitation, and allergic reactions. Long-term, regular, or high-dose use of lemon balm isn't recommended. There's some concern that discontinuing use can trigger rebounding anxiety in some people. Lemon balm may cause sedation. The herb may interact with supplements and medita medications such as sed sedatives, thyroid medications, chemotherapy like Tamoxifen and Aronitecan, whatever the hell that is, Warfarin, glaucoma medication and drugs that affect serotonin and GABA. It shouldn't be taken with alcohol. High doses of lemon balm may affect thyroid function and contribute to increased anxiety and a negative mood. It's a good idea to test a small area of lemon balm, cream, a salt ointment or oil for a day before applying it to larger amounts of the skin. Pregnant women, nursing mothers, and children shouldn't take lemon balm supplements. Avoid taking lemon balm within two weeks of a scheduled surgery you can get you can read additional tips using supplements but keep in mind that self-treating and avoiding or delaying standard care can have serious consequences the takeaway while a cup of lemon balm tea once in a while may help to promote a sense of calm more re more research is needed before the herb it can be recommended as a treatment for conditions such as anxiety or alzheimer's disease if you're still considering using it talk with your healthcare provider first to weigh the pros and cons of and discuss whether it's right option for you. If you're going, if you're growing your own lemon balm or using dried leaves for tea, there's little risk. But if you're taking capsules, powder, or other commercially prepared supplements or herbs, choose a reputable company. Herbs and supplements are not monitored by the FDA, and there may be issues with purity, quality, and safety. Lemon balm is perennial herb that's grown all over the world. People have used it for centuries to treat various ailments. Scientific research has shown lemon balm to be effective in protecting the heart and liver from common diseases. Lemon balm has antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, anti and antioxidant properties. These properties are often operate in ways that circumvent the normal resistances that illness, resistances that illnesses form to many medications and remedies. Lemon balm can be applied topically to help treat herpes outbreaks and extend time between outbreaks. Using lemon balm and or extract can improve mood, concentration, and sleep quality. One common proven remedy using lemon balm is a regulation of overactive thyroid. However, if you have several underactive thyroid, so severely underactive thyroid, it's not advisable for you to use lemon balm regularly. Lemon balm has been used for centuries. It's noted for its positive effects on those who use it, like a noticeable improvement in mood. So I'll give lemon balm leaves extract a thumbs up alone, but once again, with all the other garbage ingredients, you probably aren't getting much from it. Okay, let's see what's after that. Uh, vitamin E acetate, thumbs down. Hibiscus extract, here we are. The flowers and leaves can be made into teas and, and liquid extracts that can help treat a variety of conditions. Hibiscus can help with weight loss and cancer, upset stomach, high blood pressure, bacterial infections, fever. Moderate, modern studies show promise for both the tea and hibiscus plant extract to lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels. Although more research is still needed, this could be good news for the future of heart disease treatment. After a recent study, another recent study found that hibiscus extract might have an effect on metabolism preventing obesity and fat buildup in the liver. Hibiscus is possibly unsafe when taken by mouth as a medicine. Side effects of hibiscus are uncommon, but might include temporary stomach upset or pain, gas, constipation, nausea, painful urination, headache, ringing in the ears, or shakiness. Hibiscus is likely safe for most people when consumed in food amounts. It is possibly safe when taken by mouth approximately appropriately in medical amounts. The possible side effects of hibiscus are not known which is kind of weird because, it, I mean, this is from the same link. It said, this is why it's, uh, here's the, uh, are side effects are uncommon, but might include these, like might, like it might. So did that include, did that, are those actual or they just might include that? But then it says the possible side effects of hibiscus are not known, so it's kind of weird. Uh, pregnancy and breastfeeding. Hibiscus is possibly unsafe when taken by mouth as a medicine. Side effects of hibiscus are uncommon, but might include temporary stomach upset or pain gas, constipation, nausea, pain for urination, headache, ringing in the ear, shakiness again. Uncommon, but might. Like, what the hell was might? Like, did they? Have this actually happened before? Or did it not happen before? I don't want to hear about might. 
So I'm guessing it has, I'm just guessing. So, however, most of the studies on the effects of hibiscus tea relate to the tea extract, which are more concentrated than simply drinking the tea itself and might amplify the positive potential effect. The risks, there are some minor side effects and risks to consider when drinking hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea is toxic to the liver in extremely high doses. Toxicity was seen at such high doses, however, that it would probably be difficult to consume that much in tea form. Most sources recommend three to four eight ounce glasses of hibiscus tea daily, which seems like a reasonable amount of, of to avoid adverse effects. And I even say that's a lot. Three to four eight ounce glasses of hibiscus tea daily. I mean, I would just drink like a tea a day. Even two's a lot to me. I mean, one in the morning, one at night, and I would normally mix them up, like do two different flavors. Uh, of great concern is the potential effect hibiscus tea has on pregnant women. Pregnant women should never drink hibiscus tea or take hibiscus products as it can cause emenagogu, <laughs> emenagog effects. This means it can induce, induce menstruation, which would lead to premature uh, birth. While this could potentially be helpful with women with irregular periods, although that has never been studied, it also means that pregnant women drinking hibiscus tea could experience premature labor. Generally, it is not known whether or not hibiscus tea is safe for nursing mothers who should also avoid drinking it until they discontinue nursing. Final thoughts on hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea is popular is a popular beverage around the world, served hot or cold and flavored in a variety of ways. I personally love hibiscus tea, uh, flavor-wise and also good. Uh, the most well-known benefit of hibiscus tea is the ability to lower a high blood pressure, which has been noted in several scientific studies. It is likely that it may also help to lower high triglyceride, cholesterol, and blood sugar, as well as aid in managing healthy weight and preventing liver disease. Because it is rich in antioxidants, hibiscus extracts have been studied for their effects on cancer and found it in a lab setting to cause cell death and leukemia and gastric cancer cells. Hibiscus tea is also being studied for potential impacts on depression, MRSA, and kidney stones. And extremely high doses that can be toxic to the liver. Pregnant women should never consume hibiscus products, including tea, as they could prematurely induce labor. Hibiscus tea interacts with some medications, so consult with your physician before drinking hibiscus tea if you are taking any prescription medication. All right, so after the hibiscus extract, we have calcium phosphate, which I believe was a thumbs down as well. Gum arabic, I believe was a thumbs up. Calcium. You know, whatever, B5, B3, B6, whatever. I gave them the thumbs up. I didn't look into them just because they're vitamins. Um, so as you see, we went over the eight ingredients there and probably 90 to 95%, probably 95% I would say of the ingredients in every single one of them were thumbs down harmful ingredients. So the whole I give every individual flavor a thumbs down, as you could probably already tell, and then the whole brand. Uh, I don't know if they're doing any other kind of products, but just these eight, I just Googled Soapy Life Water, because I had this idea a while back, and these are the eight, it said the eight flavors, so I'm thinking this is their only eight flavors. Mm -hmm. Ugh, excuse me. And so thumbs down the whole brand, the whole, product their whole product line their whole company their whole brand for using these garbage ingredients um so be life waters more like so be damn anti-life water or so so be garbage water or so be harmful water um would be more accurate representations so i'm just putting the knowledge out here y'all can do what y'all want to with it Again, everything I tell you, I'm avoiding. I am avoiding, and I'm not. I'm not drinking. I don't care how good this Sobe Life Water tastes. This wasn't a taste test review. And I've, I've never had any. I I'll, uh, got something one time, uh, a meal, and I, that was one of the options. I was like Sobe Life Water. Hmm. I thought I want to check into that, and then I came up with ideas to do a lot of the other ones. The brand reviews, the breakdown, really, because I was like, it's probably not that healthy because it was like where all the other sodas are at. Um. Damn, it's yo. Mm, out of nowhere. So do what y'all want to with it. I just really hope this helps. I know this one may be a long one, but I put at the beginning there, I'm, I'm starting to timestamp my videos because my videos are about providing value in some form and this one is informative and health. And the thing is these ingredients, they might not bother you much now, but drinking these things for years and years and years, they compound up in your body and Believe it or not, these things affect your kids. Like if you don't even have kids yet, 
they would affect their kids more when they're younger if they're drinking them. But if you have don't have kids yet, you've just been drinking, you're taking in all these garbage processed foods, not just these, but all kind of garbage gar processed foods. You better believe that's affecting uh, your kid when you have a kid. So anyway, that's it for this. I hope y'all enjoyed it. Again, please like, comment, share, subscribe. This video took me so long. I think it just took me a couple hours just to record all this. Um, like a week or so for just researching. But like I said, all worth it to get y'all this knowledge. And I'm actually learning stuff too from researching um, exactly what is bad, what's harmful, and what is okay. So again, hope this helps. Please avoid Sobe Life Water for your, for your health and make sure your kids aren't drinking it as well. Um, you know, the name sounds nice and friendly, but it's not nice and friendly at all. Even the ingredients that are in there that are healthy, like with all these other garbage ingredients, it's not healthy at all. Like, you know, that would basically negate all the health benefits from those um, few healthy, literally few health, like the one healthy thing or one or two okay things that are in the ingredient list. All the other garbage just overrides that and you're getting no positive benefits from this. So anyway, and again, if you don't think drinking and eating stuff like this is really affecting you much, stop drinking and eating stuff like this. Start doing whole organic, whole foods, non-processed foods and do that for a little bit and you'll, you can tell the difference, trust me. From being on this path for so long, if I go back and I start eating garbage, even for like a full day or so, man, I feel it like crazy in my performance in the gym, just overall feeling energy, just aches and pains, inflammation stuff. It's, it's night and day once you finally get away from it, you can see how much it really does affect you. So uh, I touch on in this video, if you're feeling chest now, like basically you think you may be feeling, feeling good, but you're really not. It's basically because you're eating all these garbage foods, you think that's fine, but really base level, like somebody like me who's eating so healthy and exercising and take care of their body, I'm way up here feeling good, but you're down here thinking you could be feeling good if you would fix your diet and all. You could be feeling up here too and see what feeling good really feels like. So that's it for the video. I really, really, really hope y'all enjoyed this. Uh, I got a vlog coming next and then a vid video for a subscriber, a potassium video they requested. Uh, a taste test on another, another, another herbal tea. I had a subscriber comment and saying how much they enjoyed those. So I went and bought some more herbal teas. Um, I just haven't been doing as much of those because I've been bulking so I don't do as many herbal teas, but I'm gonna do some because they enjoy them. And then from there, I'm not 100% sure yet, just constantly on the grind. Normally I pump out videos faster, but these here recently have been taking a lot longer to produce. And that's just what it takes to get it out there to do it right. So anyway, stay happy, stay healthy, stay smart, always read the ingredients list. I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Peace out. And another thing, if y'all have any kind of products or brands or basically products right now, which just kind of is like a, pro a brand review, I think that's all their drinks, but if you have any products or brands or anything like that, mainly products, uh, y'all want me to review, look into, I literally research every ingredient in that product, comment down below because I already got a list that I'm gonna be doing, that list will always be forever growing. And again, if y'all got any you know, specific y'all want me to look into that y'all are curious about, I'd love to do that because I know for a fact that's helping somebody. These I'm hoping are gonna help people I don't know. Uh, you know, because that way I know specifically what you want, basically I can provide you directly with um, bit, uh, reward basically, or uh, service, that's the word, I look for I can provide you with service.